So Chris, tell us what sort of stories work best for the health pages? Well, th there's no formula. You can't sort of put it into uh, an easy equation. But I, what I, how I like to think of it, it is something that someone reading their breakfast or on the train to work is going to make them stop if they flick through the pages and think, oh, well, I want to know more about that. Now, that could be something about how the NHS care is going to affect them, their children, their, their parents when they go to hospital. It could be something about you know, which medicine works for or doesn't for a condition they might have. Um, it, it might be something about how they can you know, keep healthy and stop becoming ill in the first place. Um, or it could be something that will just make them smile. Sometimes quite rare in health, but there, you know, there are some strange sort of stories that make you go, huh, and uh, I'd read them. I wrote one recently about the, uh, the black sequencing the, the DNA of the Black Death. Um, and how it differs with different outbreaks and that, that, that sort of thing makes people sort of stop and think that, that was interesting before they skip on to the next page in the politics and the sport. You're working solo on the, uh, the health desk, so how yeah. much content do you file a week? Well, it does vary, but at the moment there is a, there's an essential demand for, for stories about health. Uh, the NHS is coming back to the forefront of politics, so it's, it's quite a lot at the moment. Um, now, n not all of that always makes the paper, sometimes that only goes online or elsewhere, but I would say uh, probably on an average day I'll file four or five stories, sort of totalling about you know, 2,000 words. Like that. How would you describe your relationship with PRs? Well, it's an, it's an interesting relationship. In some sense, it's, it's, a, it's an essential relationship. You know, you, I couldn't really do the job without PRs alerting me to things, what's going on. Um, you know, there are, I get lots, I mean, bombarded with stuff from PRs, some of which isn't very useful, but I, I suppose I prefer to be able to sift through it and find what I want myself. And so, you know, at its best, I will get, um, you know, PR working for an organisation that, that, I, that I know and trust and will have something to say, and they will say, I know this, this kind of story that, that you're interested in, um, it's coming out then, this is what we think, um, and here's what we propose to, to say about it in a nice sort of succinct way that shows engagement with what I have written, what the paper is interested in, and can say, this is why we think this will be interesting to, to your readers. Is there anything in particular that PRs need to be thinking about when they're pitching something into you? I mean, I would say, I mean, it's, it sounds basic, but it, surprising how often it isn't. Uh, listen to, which is, you know, make sure you know what the audience of the, the, the paper is uh, and what sort of things I will write about, so as opposed to some of my colleagues who might write about something different. I mean, I'll write a lot about policy, I'll write a lot about uh, academic research studies, that kind of thing. You know, I don't do many product launches on fruit juice and that kind of thing. I get bombarded with a lot of that kind of stuff, and you think you could have saved yourself some time by knowing there are some parts of the paper that might do that by knowing actually that will be best pitched to someone else rather, rather than me.